Greetings folks, Joseph Kursky here with you to chat about the following. Citizen Science with Mapillary. Citizen Science with Mapillary. The idea behind Mapillary is a simple but powerful one. Take photos of a place of interest as you walk, bike, drive, hit a skateboard, however else you move across the landscape using the Mapillary mobile app. The app takes photographs automatically which you then upload to the Mapillary database. Once there, they are wonderfully combined to a ground photo view that it's a bit like Google Street View, showing you a digital virtual path of how you traverse the landscape. Mapillary is part of the growing crowdsourcing citizen science movement, which seeks to generate volunteer geographic information content from ordinary folks, ordinary citizens. In fact, Mapillary is helping to generate critical infrastructure and natural resources inventory in places around the world that have no national mapping agency or local GIS data. Mapillary is therefore helping to create a data-informed citizenry that can more effectively plan resilient, safe, and thriving communities. As part of the growing set of artificial intelligence tools, Mapillary can also automatically extract map features from images, light poles, trees, benches, curbs, and so on. While I have written about Mapillary in the past and regularly include Mapillary in my field workshops, in this video I wish to provide an update for people already familiar with this tool and introduce new people to these exciting capabilities. Mapillary is much more than a set of tools. It is a community with its own meetups and ambassadors, and it is an ESRI business partner. At the time of this writing, or this video, over 710 million images have been contributed, covering over 8.6 million kilometers. Currently, the site's leaderboard shows that the top 50 users have submitted over 1 million images each, with the leader at 18 million images and nearly 300,000 kilometers. I currently have submitted 2,400 images covering 24 kilometers. I have a long way to go. Ah, more field work. There are many uses for Mapillary in education, and I have explored all of the following with students at the secondary, university, and informal education, libraries, museums, after-school clubs level over the past few years in a wide variety of settings and institutions. First, I used Mapillary to help students explore places of interest from thousands of users around the world. The Mapillary map page linked to images allows instructors and students to play sequences of images in a flowing video style that provides a powerful immersive experience of thousands of landscapes and places across the world. What clues do the vegetation, the land use, the building type, the weather, uh, the place names give about the climate, about ecoregions, about biomes, about history and culture of the area? These images and maps can be powerful sources of inquiry. Promoting investigations, using other sources, and drawing on content knowledge in history, environmental studies, geography, earth science, and even language arts, as I explain in this video. To examine the map and images from the main page under the imagery tile, Select Explore Coverage. A global map will open with the mapillary data collected shown in green. For example, if you zoom to Melbourne, Australia, good on you, mate, you will see a large circular feature that I collected in Royal Park, shown here. You can see the photographs that I took on a fine late winter day as I was walking to the University of Melbourne to teach a GIS workshop. Look at those fantastic Australian trees. Awesome. You can also tick the play button in the image to travel around the circle as I did, in your case, virtually using the images. Note how each image indicates where on the map it was captured and what direction, cardinal direction, from straight ahead I took it. You can also play the sequence in full screen mode with the map in the corner turn on object detection, or filter the view. Try walking along my route through Royal Park in Melbourne by clicking on the forward and backward arrows in the immersive view shown here, collected with Mapillary. Here's an example set of Mapillary points and images I collected in Royal Park in Melbourne. Second, I use Mapillary with students in the field to generate and create data. 
and encourage faculty listening to this video to do the same with your own students. You will need to register for a free Mapillary account to do this. After obtaining your free account, download the Mapillary app for your phone. You can use this Mapillary app to create photos and maps to document a field trip to your local wetland, rainforest, prairie, or urban neighborhood. And if you cannot get off campus, hey, use the tools to walk every pathway on campus, every trail, every lawn on campus. The Mapillary app is free and fun to use and can spark discussions such as how does the app determine my location and how does the app know what direction I am pointing my phone. As you collect tracks, they will be visible on the web map along with the global community's tracks and also your own tracks will be visible as uploads on your phone app, shown here. Here's my set of Mapillary images currently online. Now, for students who become familiar with creating ESRI ArcGIS online maps and ESRI story maps, Mapillary images can be embedded in these types of multimedia maps as well. Start simply by downloading one image from Mapillary, such as mine, shown here, in Melbourne using the download image while logged into Mapillary, images.mapillary.com, etc. Add this into a map in ArcGIS Online. Make a story map and experiment with this image, or link to the image online. See here, for example. Here's an example Mapillary image embedded in a map note in ArcGIS Online. Try it yourself with my image shown here. Mapillary provides map data as a subscription and downloads are requested through Mapillary through, for organizations. Mapillary for organizations is a workspace that anyone with a Mapillary account can create. Within an organization, there can be multiple individual accounts. Thus, it provides a way to organize, capture, and projects and request data for your area of interest, rather like putting together a team for mapping purposes. To use data for educational purposes, you should focus on data that you or your students have collected. You can download your Mapillary map data and bring it into ArcGIS Online. Awesome! The data gets extracted as a GeoJSON, JSON file, which you can add to your ArcGIS Online map, as I show here and explain right now. Go to your sequence in the web mapping app. Then, click on the three dots in the bottom right corner, as shown here. And then, the three dots on your collected track allow you to download your data for use in ArcGIS. Now, why would you want to bring it into ArcGIS? So that you could do more with it. Now, after clicking on the three dots, select Advanced Options. Then, download lines to get a trace of your track, as shown here. After selecting Download Lines, a GeoJSON Geo file will open up in a web browser tab. Right-click somewhere in the white space where there is no text and select Save As. This is just a tiny bit tricky, but you can do it. Change the file type to All Files and then add the Geo.GeoJSON extension to the file name. Alternatively, in a web browser where you are displaying the GeoJSON file, copy all of its contents, paste it into a notepad or WordPad or some text editor, and name the file appropriately, such as Melbourne underscore track dot GeoJSON. Your system will likely add TXT to the end of the file name, but you don't want this. If it does that, rename the file and take off the .txt extension. Now, once you've got your GeoJSON file or GeoJSON file, go to ArcGIS Online, use the Add Data function, Add from File, and point to your GeoJSON file. Symbolize the tracks in the area on username so that you can determine which track is your own, as I did shown here. Alternatively, you could add your own GeoJSON file as a file to your ArcGIS online content, thereby creating a feature service from it. Then, if you do this, you could add it to your map and filter on the username so that you only see your own track, as shown here. Now that it is a feature service, Ooh, it's even a more powerful layer than simply a map 
element. Once it's a feature service, you can use it as input to your spatial analysis tools, such as buffer, overlay, and more. Next, for enhanced geo-visualization, try bringing your mapillary track into the 3D scene viewer in ArcGIS Online. Oh, wow, as I did here, shown at this point. Here's my mapillary track in an ESRI ArcGIS 3D scene. Pretty cool. Here's my close-up of my mapillary track in a 3D scene viewer using a hiker as the symbol. Easily done. Want to dig deeper? Well, okay, you can even extract features from the images. To do this, see the information on the map features and the help page about how to bring data into ArcGIS Online. When you do so, you are using ah, artificial intelligence in action. See an example of features in the benches example below, right here, along with my track. The benches have been extracted with the mapillary algorithms from the images on my track. This is, this is the wave of the future, folks. Pretty exciting stuff. Extracting the images, in this case benches, from a set of images. That is the benches extracted. Now, Mapillary uses computer vision, a form of artificial intelligence, to automatically identify and extract map objects like these benches, or light poles, or trees, or whatever you have. Next, use these guidelines to start building story maps with Mapillary. Hmm, why would you want to do that? Well, then you can tell a story about your trees, about your light poles, etc. Essentially, you will get the embed code for the Mapillary image, its thumbnail, and the geographic, mm, this is important, coordinates. As they are working through the procedures, show the students, show the people you're working with this example set of stories and this story map shown here of a refugee camp for inspiration. For students who become familiar with using ESRI's web app builder or the experience builder, you might also encourage them to try the Mapillary widget, which allows for the viewing of Mapillary street level images. Ooh, so many connections here, folks. I encourage you to use these Mapillary tools to enhance your field work, teach about apps, WebGIS, and crowdsourcing, and to improve the spatial thinking of your students. Thanks.